This video is sponsored by Keeper. Apple tried to save Android by making the iPhone's best feature totally free. No, this isn't clickbait. Yes, this is a real story that you probably haven't heard before. There has been a lot of talk lately about Apple going after the little guy, crushing their competition to maintain their monopoly. But actually, I'd argue Apple is more open these days than they've ever been before, but Android fans just don't want to admit it. But before you roast me down in the comments, give me a chance to defend myself and tell you why this green bubble versus blue bubble debate really isn't Apple's problem at all. They tried to avoid this, but they were sort of caught in the middle. Now, I know many of you who are outside the US watching this video probably have been following this Apple beeper drama and wondering why it's such a big deal. And I'll answer that question in a moment, but for those who don't know, basically the story goes that this app figured out how to circumvent iMessage's walled garden and bring the iMessage experience, features and all, over to Android. Admittedly, it was a cool workaround and worked for a couple of days until Apple quickly plugged the hole that it was using and stopped it from working. It eventually came back online, but it's only a matter of time until Apple does it again. Which basically led to two vocal groups taking over the internet over the last couple of days. It's Apple's crushing the little guy, they're destroying competition, they're a horrible monopoly and they should be destroyed from the earth. To the others who go, who cares about iMessage? Why not just use Telegram, WhatsApp, or Facebook Messenger? Long story short, it's sort of an American thing. People here don't download other messaging apps, at least most people don't, so they stick with the default that comes with their phone. So if you buy an iPhone, you're sort of default in iMessage and that's just sort of what you're using. And on Android, you're sort of using your cell phone number and SMS and whatever messaging app sort of comes stock with the Android phone you choose to buy. Which basically has led to a very poor experience if you try to text from Android to iOS or vice versa. You're just sort of getting this broken experience, things don't work right, there's no read receipts, media is super small and grainy. It's just sort of a bad experience. And Apple does have a fix to this, but I'll come back to that more in just a moment. First though, let me provide a little bit of context because when Apple first debuted the very first iPhone, they built this amazing messaging app that was built on the backbone of standard SMS and MMS. It was in a pretty wrapper and it had a nice interface, but it used the same texting standard you could get on your Blackberry or Motorola or any other phone of the day. In fact, Apple really didn't have this messaging ecosystem lock-in until 2010 when they introduced a brand new feature called FaceTime that made video calling on your iPhone really, really simple. And many assumed that this was going to be Apple's new tie-in and lock-in. This was gonna get you to only buy an iPhone and sort of keep you in Apple's walled garden. But actually it wasn't intended to be that way because listen to what Steve Jobs had to say during that initial FaceTime unveil. Now, FaceTime is based on a lot of open standards. H.264 video, AAC audio, and a bunch of alphabet soup acronyms. <laughs> and we're gonna take it all the way. We're going to the standards bodies starting tomorrow, and we're gonna make FaceTime an open industry standard. Yes, according to Steve Jobs, FaceTime was originally built to be an open source solution. Apple was gonna give this technology and the schematics away so other companies, namely Android phone manufacturers and Google's Android OS, could use it. So you could have video calls between your iPhone and your Android phone and your Windows phone in a really easy way. This was never intended to be a ecosystem lock-in play, but something that all phone manufacturers could enjoy. But obviously it's 2023 and that never happened, which sort of leads you to ask the obvious question, which is why? And there are some different theories as to why this never happened. Some engineers behind the scenes said that Apple was lying about this and it was never intended to be open source. Probably the most likely answer is the one mostly believed by the community, which is there were some patent issues and legal issues, which meant that Apple tried to fight it, but they just never could release it open source due to some patent technicalities and Apple just couldn't do it for legal reasons. Unfortunately, this type of patent lawsuit that killed the idea for an open source FaceTime is super common in the tech space these days. And what's also very common and a really sad sight to see are all these awful cyber attacks and data breaches that leave our personal and what was supposed to be private information vulnerable and just sort of floating around online, which is exactly where you don't want it to be. 
in the hands of bad actors. I honestly can't imagine not having a password manager these days. It's so important for so many reasons, including the ability to sort of have strong and unique passwords for every single online service you use. And if you're looking for the best password manager, and trust me, I've tried a bunch, you wanna go with my personal recommendation, my go-to pick, my number one, that's gonna be the sponsor of this video. That's Keeper Security and their amazing password manager. And if you're wondering why Keeper, well, the answer is simple. It's the most secure, certified, tested, and audited password security platform in the world. And I have wonderful peace of mind knowing that my accounts are protected and secure with zero trust and zero knowledge security. And look, I know that you guys watching this video are tech savvy. You're the go-to tech support for your friends and family. So as you see your relatives and family members probably around the holidays and you're doing your annual tech support, it is imperative that you get them connected to Keeper and their amazing password manager. Your friends and family need that security. They've got to keep their password safe and secure. I know so many people out there use the same password for every single service, which is a huge no-no. So check out my personal recommendation, Keeper's amazing password manager for you, your friends, your family, anyone you know at the link down below. And also you can get a special here, 50% off with code AppleCircle50, or give it a test run for free for 30 days with a free trial. You can hit the link down below to learn more, check that out for yourself and take advantage of this amazing deal and this wonderful password manager today. And there is a case to be made that these kind of legal issues and the tangled web of trying to work with other companies led to Apple just building their own in-house solution. Famously, iMessage launched in 2011. It brought some nice feature rich features, so to speak, uh, to Apple devices. So if you're texting an Apple device owner uh, who had an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac, it gave you some nice features. And then from there, iMessage sort of dominated in the US and became sort of the de facto for most people, again, at least here in the United States. And that sort of led us to where we are today. There's the green bubble versus blue bubble debate. And really the larger issue is many think Apple has too much control in many different areas, including messaging, and Apple shouldn't be able to control your messaging experience. You should be able to text freely no matter what device you've got in your pocket, which has led to many companies, including the one right now, Beeper, being the most public about it, trying to find a way to circumvent Apple's security measures and reverse engineer things to bring the full iMessage experience to Android. So you could have blue bubbles and the full iMessage experience on any device, which sounds nice in theory, but isn't how Apple intended it to be for obvious reasons. And I think personally, it shouldn't exist for a couple of big reasons. I know this is a little bit of a controversial stance, but this is my opinion. iMessage on Android is not a right. It's a feature that Apple has created for Apple device owners. If you want iMessage, you should buy an iPhone. If you want those features and you want what Apple has to offer, you should pony up the money and buy what Apple is selling because it's there, it's accessible. You just have to buy an iPhone. Maybe you don't like iOS, fine, whatever your argument is, but you shouldn't be able to get iMessage on Android just because you want it. With that said though, the clear argument I'm gonna make sort of in addition to that is that basic feature rich messaging should be accessible on all devices. You shouldn't be able to limit high quality photo and video sending to just Apple devices. Basic things these days like read receipts and um, tap backs, for example, or reactions to messages and stuff like that, those are sort of basic messaging features that should exist on any device you're using. And that is exactly why it is very nice to see Apple, better late than ever, finally adopt RCS. That is the new rich communication standards service thing. It's basically the new version of SMS for 2023, 2024. And it's going to bring all of those staple messaging features, read receipts, high quality media, reactions and stuff like that, to perfectly work between iOS and Android. Yes, there's still gonna be green bubbles and blue bubbles, but your texting experience will be much better, which is great. Apple is pretty late to adopt this, but they've done it. So they have sort of fulfilled that requirement of check the box to give you really good messaging on all your devices, no matter whether you use an iPhone or not. But like I said, iMessage is not basic messaging. If you like what iMessage has to offer and you want the features that it comes with, you should have to buy an Apple product. That's just sort of how it is these days. And Beeper is gonna play this cat and mouse game with Apple. They're gonna try to get the court of public opinion on their side. Some people hate what Apple's doing. They don't want them to have that control. I get it, 
But iMessage is an Apple creation. Apple should be able to make and sell their own things. They're the one uh, that has uh, paid the price of R&D and security and development and upkeep. They have made that investment. There's a reason why Apple software like macOS and iOS isn't available on any old PC or any old phone. Apple is developing their own solutions and in the society we live in today, they should be able to make, create, and sell those goods and services to consumers who want to buy it. Again, there is a very clear difference here between what iMessage has to offer and basic messaging features. Yes, basic messaging should exist on all devices, but iMessage, it's an Apple thing, and if you want that, you should probably buy an iPhone. Now, of course, this isn't to say that Apple is some perfect angel because they are far from perfect. And at the end of the day, they are focused on making the most amount of money possible. And while we have seen them become more open than they've ever been before, iOS is more customizable. You've got the Apple TV and the Apple Music app on a bunch of different devices and different TVs and softwares. And there's a lot that Apple's doing to be more open. They're only as open as they want to be that makes them money. There's a reason why they've got Apple TV on all these TVs because it makes them money. There's a reason why Apple Music exists on Android because they can get people to subscribe and make money. Apple is still clearly in the business of making money and if they found a way to monetize iMessage and bring it to the Android side of things, they might very well do that if they can make some money. They're definitely trying to grow those services as much as possible, but I do think they're making an effort these days to be a bit more open and transparent and give users more options. And like I said, RCS is a great step towards that and sort of giving features, uh, basic features to uh, everyone who wants to text with an Android owner. Though again, it was a little late, but they did finally do it and it's gonna roll out next year to their credit. Where do you stand on this? Do you think that Apple is the big bad giant and the little guys are trying to take them down and this is a good thing that Apple should be forced to be more open and transparent and open the gates up for iMessage and let it be on everything? Or do you think that this is sort of a cat and mouse game where Apple has the right to defend their features and if you want those features, you should have to pay and buy an iPhone? A little bit of complicated stuff here, a little complicated business, so I'm sure the comment section uh, below will be interesting, but sound off in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know what you think. As always, I appreciate you guys watching so much. Thank you as always. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. I'll see you all in the next one.